this is hometown America, and uh, Corning has made it that way. I call us uh, the big little town because we've got a lot more going on than an average 11,000 person town would have. We are a small town, but there's a very upscale metro feel to it because of having Corning Incorporated here with us. It's unique. We're very intertwined and we need a strong community to support the area. We always invest in the community. It's really paramount that you have a strong community if you're going to have a strong company. One of the things that I'm proudest of is Market Street. We've done a lot of downtown development projects. We've really partnered very closely with the city. We did our first upper story development in 2000, converted them to residents, and today we have 89 and 11 more going on this year. And that's really enhanced the downtown. This building, built in 1887, bought it out of bankruptcy about eight or nine years ago. The group that's in here now, radio station, is a long-term tenant. We have three 1,000 square foot lofts on the second floor and a 4,300 square foot loft on the third floor. Corning brings in so many professionals. It's also been attractive for the professionals coming in that work right here at headquarters, walk right right back home, have a great place to live. I don't think there'd be anybody here that does business on Market Street that wouldn't just have a lot of good things to say about the effect, the corporate citizen that we have in Corning Incorporated. One of the benefits, obviously, of having Corning Incorporated in your backyard, and literally they are in our backyard, is that we get to kind of ride the wave of, of their success. Corning always has things coming along. They Now their, their big thing is Gorilla Glass. If you have an opportunity to visit Sullivan Park, uh, that's the think tank for Corning, and a lot of good stuff coming out of there. We have a great history of innovation at Corning going back 160 years plus. Invented the Edison light bulb. We did Pyrosaram, which became Corningware. Uh, we also invented the TV tubes that enabled CRT TVs. These are products from our specialty materials division. The people understand and know about Gorilla Glass and the great strength that it has and the ability that it has to withstand damage. So Gorilla Glass is a very important product for us. We would not have been successful with Gorilla Glass if we didn't understand everything that could be known about our fusion process and all the parameters that were necessary to ensure manufacturability. So this is a brutal test. This is a sharp tungsten carbide tip. Very hard, very sharp. And what I'm gonna do is use this to control the drop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and break it. And you notice it just broke, but into two pieces. So this is a safe piece of glass. Now I'm gonna show you what happens when we ion exchange a glass too much. And we have so much stored strain energy in there that when the crack finally does hit it, the central tension inside the glass is gonna rip it apart. Okay, so notice a piece of glass, and there's gonna be nothing left when I'm done. Okay, so watch this one, keep your mouth closed, and you'll see why in a second. Wow. Our facility, the majority of what we do is uh, melting and forming of new glasses and glass compositions uh, that Corning's working to develop, like Gorilla Glass. With the number of glass developments that Corning has going, um, we melt several crucibles of glass every day. In our organization, we see the developments of almost every new glass uh, project or product that we're shooting for as a company. The breadth of what we get to experience is great. And in the composition group, what we do is we formulate the glass and what chemicals are in them and the oxide makeup to hit a certain set of target properties and optimize them for either strength, durability, or optical properties. And then we'll take them to Don's group, they'll scale them up, melt them, make big patties for us so we can actually cut them up, test the properties, and measure the performance of the glass. We'll do glass composition work, everything from fiber lasers and amplifiers to display glass and now Gorilla Glasses. The pour they're going to do is what we call an optical patty. It's the most typical uh, type of pour that the scientists use to um, cut up into pieces to do their uh, characterization to see if they're getting the materials properties they want. Probably the most fun part about our job is when we get the patties back, it's like Christmas every day. You get a little present, you get to see what they perform like. And just looking at it, we can tell if it's going to be a bubble problem to melt the glass. When we scribe it, we can tell how tough the glass actually is. And it's kind of a quick feedback loop so we can go on to the next process. 
see this is a normal glass, we take a scribers, tungsten carbide wheel, it's very hard, and we just take it across the glass, and you can see what kind of damage it puts in the glass. And because we have that flaw in there that you can see really well, and we just hit it with a hammer, you can see it breaks right down the line. Now, we discovered in the lab, we got these other glasses, I use the same pressure, you can see how hard I'm pushing on this stuff, you don't notice, you hear the difference, and you can see the difference. And now, instead of damaging the glass, the glass basically absorbed all that energy and deflected it. So now it becomes a damage-resistant glass. In the case of Gorilla Glass, it was fortunate because we had a starting point. We had done research like this back in the 60s, and we had even tried to commercialize products and had very small niche commercial products that were predecessors to Gorilla Glass. So the trick was to adjust the composition, to narrow the composition range of possibility down to the real narrow much, much narrower range of things that would actually work and uh, to try and understand the relationships between the different components while still getting this amazing strength. What we want to offer to the market is a chemically strengthened advantage product that gives damage resistance beyond any other product in the market today. My job is to break Gorilla Glass and understand why it performs the way that it does and how can we best improve it and give the best glass to the market for your mobile device. I can jump on it. Still intact. Mm -hmm. A common misconception that some people in the consumer market have is that they think that Gorilla Glass is unbreakable. And the reality is it's still a glass and it can be broken, but keeping in mind that what's really important is how much effort it takes <laughs> to cause that glass to break. And still cannot break it with over 100 pounds of force. What we're trying to do is instill in everybody the idea that it's not just innovation, it's entrepreneurism. Right? You want to get out there and think about what the customer needs. We need to be thinking about what they need two or three years from now, all the time. And we need to be on target all the time, testing our ideas. We are all thinking differently than we used to think. We always have to be effectively breaking the rules. And with very, very smart people, you'd be surprised how often you can do that. Certainly, Corning, yeah. as a corporation, has been the driving force behind the growth of Corning New York. It's been the major employer in the area for years and years, and as Corning does, so does the community in terms of economics. What would the landscape of this community look like without Corning Incorporated here? And I think that's where we need to step back and really appreciate having Corning Incorporated right here. To not have them here, <laughs> wow. Would it change the landscape of this community? You bet. We know at any given point, you know, because of economics, they could certainly make the decision to go somewhere else. And it, it might be cheaper for them to do business other places. Um, but we're very fortunate that their history is here and that they still honor their history, which is right here in Corning, New York.